Good morning, uh, my name is Ryan Corkwell. I am with Vantage Point Archery, and I am here with... Daryl Barnett. And Daryl, what's your company's name? Digital to Definitive. And this morning we're gonna go over a lot of the design intent around the new Omega Broadhead. From a little bit of sharpening, to a little bit of why Daryl had this great idea for a new Broadhead that VPA is now making. Some of the things that we wanted to talk about this morning with Daryl is just that um, the design intent and why don't you go into like some of the main points that set the Omega Broadhead away from, apart from any other Broadhead that you feel it's out on the market right now. So why don't we start with the structural integrity? Well, it's a culmination of uh, what we know about broadheads and we've learned over the last 50 years and really it starts with with uh, Ed Ashby and the Ashby Foundation what he's done for broadheads especially the single bevel broadheads and uh, increasing lethality and and then just surveying the market seeing what's out there and listening to feedback kind of what what people are saying is is why why would they shoot or why would they not shoot a single bevel broadhead on front of their arrows and then you know as an engineer we try to address what uh, what those issues are and make them better so that uh, we uh, you know increase the harvest rates and make it easier for you to have sharp broadheads in the field right yeah and uh, and so this is sort of after considering all of these kinds of things an engineer basically takes uh, the four or five different ideas and and uh, I would say design constraints. And from those design constraints, you kind of fit the broadhead into those, those baskets. And so like structural integrity, if, the, if that's the, one of those baskets that we need to, to uh, meet, how do we make the broadhead structurally uh, strong, but yet mass efficient, right? How do we make it fly well, right? How do we make it lethal? and still fit within those and maximize that, that partic particular basket. And then of course, how do you maintain it? Meaning sharpening or resharpening the broad head. And then finally, can it be manufactured? So all of those things up front, you have to consider and you have to put one weight on, on more on one than the other. Uh, like for instance, if, if it's structurally uh, has the structural integrity that you want, it has the flight characteristics that you want, and lethality, then the mass kind of falls out of that because you're trying to, to increase all of those and to increase those, you really got to increase the mass. And so the mass becomes a sort of a, uh, a dependent variable based on uh, those other features. So all of that's considered when you, when you start designing uh, a broad head. And so we'll touch a little bit on that as we go through the design of the Omega broadhead and why it's a little bit different. So I guess my question is, Daryl, because I know that with my Omega 200 grain broadhead is that I can lay this flat no matter where I'm at with the lay flat sharpening technology, yeah. whether I'm in a tree stand. What was your main, main thing that you wanted to come to when designing the Omega broadhead? Okay. So I talked about the, the, the sort of the, the pillars that an engineer designs, the structural integrity and the flight, the lethality, all of those kinds of things. One of the things I wanted to do was add uh, the ability to easily sharpen a single bevel broadhead. And that's something I've noticed. If, if you look at other broadheads on the market, they all really require some kind of jig or something to hold them. At yeah, you and ours do, right? Yeah, yeah, on the VPA heads, they yeah. all can, yeah. they need a jig. Yeah. And so what I wanted to do was come up with a way that if I just laid this down flat on the sharpening stone and sharpened it like this, that it would come out sharp, right? No matter what side you try to sharpen, it lays flat on the stone, okay? And that was a sort of a characteristic that I wanted to maintain among all of the other things that, you know, that. Everything an engineer does is a compromise between what you think is important and what you think is less important. And so that was something I did not want to compromise on, was the ability for a person to be able to sharpen the broadhead, really, you know, sitting in the stand, sitting in the blind, sitting at the table, 
uh, watching TV or whatever, but be able to touch it up and keep that maintainability of your broadheads, keep them razor sharp and ready to go. So that was a, that was a key design element that I, I was thinking about throughout the whole process of coming up with this design. So let me just talk about some major features of the broadhead and you'll sort of get an idea of what we're thinking about from, a, from the engineering side of the, of the uh, uh, process. So the first thing I wanna mention is um, this is Wait, wait, how big is that? That's not what they're getting. The no, no, you're not going to get three of these in a packet. Okay, this is 10 times the scale, but it is true scale, and it has all the features on it. And so uh, one of the first things that we wanted to keep was we know that uh, Dr. Ashby's done a lot with the Tonto tip, and we wanted to keep that as a design feature. So that, that was easy, an easy feature to, to uh, come to because it's been a successful feature for a long time in broadheads. But one of the things that we did that's sort of new is the idea of going from double bevel head up here to in the back being a single bevel. So everything from here forward is a double bevel design, but it's not a typical double bevel design. What we've done is that we filled in the, the material between the ferrule and the blade edge. So all of this is very thick and very structurally robust up at the very front. So if you're impacting bone or, or doing anything that, uh, you know, even if you hit a rock on the other side of the animal, what we're trying to do is maintain as much mass and as much struggle, structural integrity as we can up here in the front of the broadhead. Now it's a double bevel, but it's, it's a unique double bevel in the sense that it's asymmetric. And what I mean by that is it's not a pure diamond shape. If you, if you cut the cross section over here and look at it, that this slope over here compared to this slope over here is greater. And uh, what that does for you is, even though it it's, it's, uh, has a lot of mass up front, it's very uh, structurally sound, very structurally strong, it still provides as a double bevel the rotation that you would get even if it was a single bevel. So if it, if it impacts bone, what we're trying to do is break the bone and start the split, split yep. in this section of the broadhead. So that when the single bevel part goes through that split, it doesn't have to use the blades to, uh, to create the split, it just maintains the split. In the rotation, right? Yeah, yep. because of the, the known quantities of the, uh, the single bevel rotating broadhead. Yeah. Okay, and so what that means is you protect the, the very sharp aspects of the blade to get through the bone and then down into the, into the vitals, right, to be able to cut the arteries and everything with a very sharp broadhead. And that's, that was one of the key design features, was try to split the bone early and then use the rest of the broadhead, uh, the sharpening there to uh, increase the lethality once you uh, get past the bone. So uh, one of the other things, now if we talk about flight, uh, one of the aspects with single bevel bro or, or with just uh, uh, solid broadheads is that if you put too much area on the blade, it's going to be hard to tune out of your bow. It's, it's going to uh, be a lifting surface. If your arrow is bent, it's launched out of the bow. And so we try to maintain a reasonable uh, span, blade span, and that's, uh, that came out at one and a sixteenth inches. So it's not huge, it's not small, but uh, if it was, was too large, then if your bow is, is out of tune a little bit, it would be hard to shoot these, you know, past about 30 yards or so. So, uh, it, you know, you, you have to compromise. If, you, if you're going to put a lot of mass in the broad head and be structurally in, uh, have structural integrity up here, you can't make this one and a half inches, right? Yeah. And it's going to do weird things. It's going to do weird things yeah. when it flies. Yeah. And, and, and so that's part of the compromise. We wanted good flight characteristics out of the broadhead. And to do that, we had a high degree of sweep back on the blade leading edge and a little bit lower uh, wingspan yep. or tip span on the back of the blade. So what's the mechanical advantage on your inch and a sixteenth on diameter yeah. or span? Yep. 
compared to your overall length of the broadhead? Okay, so the mechanical advantage of the uh, this broadhead as it sits is one and a half. So uh, this is one and a sixteenth, and and so just a little bit over one and a half inches long. Okay. okay. But the uh, but the ratio is about one and a half. But one of the things that we did that's a little bit unique is that we increased the uh, mechanical advantage of the ferrule. Yeah. So not only do we have mechanical advantage coming from the blade edge itself, but from the ferrule, if you look at it from, well, let's look at it from this side, right? You'll notice this slope that's on either side of the ferrule. And this mechanical advantage is eight and a half. All right, so it's a much larger diameter in the back than it is from the front, and it tapers, is a straight line taper from the, from the tip to the tail. Yeah. Okay, and so the purpose of that, of course, is to keep the, uh, the channel open so that the shaft can get through the bone or, or what have you before uh, without any drag or crater uh, wall interaction between the arrow shaft and the and the that we can get to those vitals. Yeah, yep. so we can get through the vitals yep. without losing a, a large percentage of the impact velocity. Figure out. Okay. Yep. So that's new. I think is talking about mechanical advantage from this side, from the from the top side. Look Definitely down. No, nobody else is doing that. No, not really. They're not quoting mechanical advantage in that regard. But I think this does just as much to hold the bone apart and uh, open the split as the mechanical advantage that you get looking at it from the plan view sure. side. Okay, so that was a key design feature as well. Daryl, why did you choose uh, VPA to make this broadhead? I mean, you could go anywhere. You could choose, there's a lot of other companies out there making broadheads. Let's, let's face that fact, right? Yeah. There are, but why, what made you choose VPA? All right, so uh, a couple of things. One is the relationships that uh, we developed with VPA. It's a good relationship, good working. You, you want to work with good people, right? Good people want to know good people. And, uh, and the fact that uh, the uh, VPA has all of the machining facilities on site, along with their, uh, uh, their offices, everything is located, co-located in the same place. And so that's very important that you have the, the manufacturing capability to be able to produce broadhead on site and, and made in America. It's very important to get the broadhead made in this country, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And if there's any issues, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to pick up the phone and call several people and just call EPA and they take care of the issues okay. up front. And of course, we went through several iterations of this broadhead. This is, this is not a one and done. I this think it's number four. It's the fourth iteration yeah. of this broadhead turning it around between uh, essentially October and, and now. Yeah, right, right at it, right on. on testing and, and all of the things associated with trying to bring Prunk to market, right? And uh, some just everything went really smoothly. It's just part of the prototyping and, and uh, the whole process. And, and the other aspect of that is BPA was very open to prototyping and developing the process. And they could see the potential in the broadhead and like, yeah, let's, let's do it. And so, uh, and so it, was a, it was a slam dunk. Yeah. You guys were already in the broadhead market. You could already do the packaging. You already have a line of broadheads and you were open to bringing other broadheads to market. And I'm like, wow, that's a, that's a great fit. Sure you enough. Know? Sure, and I guess the thing that, as far as like here at VPA, like whether it's whether it's Jeff and Alex and I, like um, going out and 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 listening to what the market needs, right? Like they want something different. So it was an easy fit when Daryl came to us and said, "Hey, I've got an idea," and we're like, "Let's hear it." Um, all 100% American made. Um, we've got over 30 families that we're supporting here, and we really appreciate the time that Daryl has put into this project. Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm right. yeah. looking forward to doing more to see to see this line and other lines grow. Yep, continue to grow. So, Vantage Point Archery, we're not only like VPA, but we're also Absolute Machine. And when we think about Absolute, like we're always kind of pushing them about like pushing pushing the trend. Like, what's next? What new equipment can we get? What more can we invest in? Where do you see that relationship going in the future with not VPA, but like? Let's let's get broad. Let's like talk about the outdoor industry. Yeah, that's a great that's a great question. So I think one of the great fits, uh, you know, with my background in particular, uh, 
being an engineer, working for the government, to have government ties still in the Department of Defense. Uh, grew up hunting and shooting in the outdoor space. You know a lot of people in the in the outdoor space. I just I see that uh, this is the first step in a long relationship of building outdoor products, of uh, meeting customer demand in the in the uh, Department of Defense world. Just moving in a bunch of different directions that that are just trying to find, just trying to bring good quality products to market at a good price and meet the needs of the, uh, of the average hunter or outdoor enthusiast. That are not only made here in the USA, but can you give us like a little sneak peek of something that you might be working on that? <laughs> I think so. Okay. Yeah, so we're spanning the gamut. I mean, we're, we're talking about moving into making, manufacturing uh, bullets for firearms. We're talking about uh, making uh, different you know, everyone sitting in the blind says, man, I wish this thing was like this instead of like that. It would be so much better if we could add this component to it and make it better. And, and so we've done that and we've got four or five different products that we're, we are in discussion with now, not just broadheads yeah. that we want to, that we want to bring to market to make, make your outdoor experience even more enjoyable. Well, once again, I just wanted to take the time to, um, thank you, Daryl for coming up here. I know it's your, it's your busy season and I really appreciate just man, that relationship of not only you coming up here to see VPA, but man, I've been dinner last night with my family that, that speaks to me. Right? Yeah. Right. That's, it was cool. It was a lot cool. of fun. And we, we get to do that. Um, so the Omega Broadhead guys, um, it's out now on the website at vantagepointarchery.com, uh, two or left and right bevel, all American Maine.